Hey guys, Captain Matt. Welcome to another episode of Tales from the Cleaning Station with Marathon Sport Fishing. Shit's gonna get wild in this one. Grab your life jackets and hang on and welcome to another action-packed episode. Marathon Sport Fishing. Welcome to another action packed episode. Today I am Wahoo fishing and things get crazy in this one. Not that things don't always get crazy on my boat for whatever reason, but things get really crazy in this episode. So you're going to want to grab your life jackets, hang on, and welcome aboard. Just got slammed. Oh shit, I got two things on. I got fish going everywhere right now. Don't like the ball, whatever it is. Oh, here. Hey guys, here I'm whipping a nice bonita in the boat. That's what that is. Let's just face it, I'm hunting Wahoo right now and we all want to catch a Wahoo. It's kind of like a bucket fish. So I don't fish them a whole lot. I'm pretty good at catching them. I'd say I'm at about 60, 70%. But here's a big hint for all you guys wanting to catch a Wahoo. When you get into a school of Bonita or Blackfin, anywhere from 100 to say 300 feet of water and there's a big school, I'm gonna tell you right now, who's eating those guys are the Wahoo. We're gonna be sword fishing the next couple days, so I got fresh bait. Always some nice little luck to have those out when you're trolling for Wahoo. Good, I got it. Everything got hit. Hey guys, so here we go. So in YouTube land, I cut about maybe seven to 10 minutes out of this video. I'm grinding on this fish for a while here. I gotta keep running forward, adjusting the boat. I'm dodging around lobster pots and other boats. So I'm doing a lot of things here. I got two big fish on the line. The third one that grabbed the top line cut it off. So I got two big fish on the line. So, so something to take note of. You see how fast I'm cranking on this rod? I just flipped back into high gear. Each crank of the reel on this particular reel is 52 inches. When a big wahoo hits your rod, first of all, there's no question when a wahoo just slams it. It's kind of like you're riding a bike down the highway and you got your fishing rod in your hand and you cast the lure across the highway and you hook a truck bumper going the opposite direction. You're going 10 miles an hour, he's doing 60. That's my best way to describe a Wahoo bite. There is no question. Nothing else can do that. A kingfish will hit it, drag will sizzle for a couple seconds and stop. Wahoo's just gonna keep hammering it out. So I'm back and forth adjusting the camera here, working the fish up to the boat, but the mono line, those guys dump is substantial. Here comes a fish. He's burning up the left side. He sees the boat. He's cranking to the left. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the fish. I'm ready to I'm ready to deal with him as I get him close. But a big thing, make sure you buy reels that have enough line and enough drag for these guys, because they are a beast. Got 
big on here, guys. It's like a big hoop. And he's coming up on top. Oh, it's a big one. Big, big, big. Big, big, big. Big, big, big. Got him! Son of a bitch! Lee is huge! Shit, the hook just came out! Big who in the boat? Big who? Look at the size of that donkey! Holy crap, I got another one on this ride! Big who in the box, baby! I got another fish on this one! Maybe I got a double who? Big wahoo in the box! Holy crap, the hook fell off right when I flipped him in the boat! Okay guys, you need to be prepared when you when you hook into a fish like this. I know already that I'm going to get this fish up beside the boat and I want a little more room to get in behind him and gaff him because it's kind of on my offside. If you're right handed, gaffing on the left side of the boat is easier because your right shoulder is off the back of the boat. Here my left shoulder is going to be off the back of the boat. So I move the other rod. I'm going to grab this oh, rod, hole, pick it up, and bump it back an extra push to give me the extra Got him up this shit up look how big these donkeys are holy crap two giant wahoo in the boat man a little excited just a little holy crap oh okay i gotta calm down i'm gonna have a freaking heart attack okay captain matt here again hey guys i finally calmed down after that little episode i don't know how big they are but they are a nice nice wahoo especially for the florida keys so, when I get back to the dock, I gotta find, grab a scale and weigh them up. Hey guys, just reeled up my other lure and it's toothed all the way up. I had a fish on it, it got bit the same time I caught the two wahoos, so there's, it, all three of the rods went at the same time, so there's probably no question that the little lure got throttled by a third wahoo. I must have went through a pretty decent school of them right at that point. Anyway, toothy critters, you can see it, it's all frayed up there. Okay guys, I'm gonna go over just a couple things that I do. Obviously, I'm in a boat by myself today. And, you know, when you, catch, when you get into a situation where you catch even one big wahoo or a big fish of any type, first of all, my gaffs. My gaffs are stored over there. Before I put the lines out, the, the small gaff goes right where it is, that two inches, the big one I use for sword fishing or a backup if I need it. But I can reach this gaff from either side of the boat. So that's very important. When I got that fish up to the boat, came up on this side, as soon as I gaffed the fish, I don't know if you can see it in the video, as soon as I gaffed it, the head came up on the boat, the lure fell out into the boat. Fish came unhooked right there. So he got power slammed into the boat. But again, I can reach the gaff. The gaff is right here. So either side of the boat, that side, this side, I can reach things you're going to need. 
if you noticed when i was reeling the fish up on this side this guy was a little more tired i took the rod which this is typically where i have my rod because that that cup rod holder there has a backing plate on it but after i got the fish up close there i bumped the rod up into that that rod holder so i had more room to gaff the fish as i got in closer to the boat but those are little things you kind of need to look at your boat go how am i set up in the event i do have a really big fish on and he's coming up to the boat how's my boat laid out am i ready am i prepared because if i wasn't ready if i had to pull the gaff out i guarantee you i'd have lost the first fish because like i said the hook fell out right at the boat the second fish he was hooked really good he was thrashing quite a while in the boat before the hook came out of him but that's things you got to kind of think about when you're when you guys are out here just take a quick look what if a 40 pounder slams my rod and takes takes it down like that if you're not ready what's going to happen is you're going to get a beautiful fish up beside the boat and lose it and i can tell you that as a as a matter of experience i've had that happen hey guys here we are back at the cleaning station those are some big fish i'm gonna grab a scale while i'm trying to weigh them i don't know what they weigh but they are the cleaning station's five feet long i'm not holding these out these are just big ass wahoos welcome to today's catch and cook obviously i had a an amazing day wahoo fishing yesterday man it was just off the chart very unusual catch two big fish trolling by myself and actually get two of them in the boat. I actually have three bites on there as you're watching the video. One of them hit one of my top water lures and of course they've got the razor mouse in them. Tore the lure off, gone. But I caught the two really nice fish. So today I'm gonna to show you what I'm doing with some of the Wahoo. There's a lot of different ways to cook it, to grill it, to fry it, tacos, everything. But I'm gonna do a little sashimi. I'm kind of making some of this up as I go. For today's recipe, one we've got the wahoo so when i when i take my fish and i clean it you guys have heard me in all my other videos i take the fish here it's rolled up in a paper towel all right right out of the fridge main ingredient number one is going to be the fish you do not want your meat sitting in any moisture you know from the fish goes in any kind of meat you got you don't want it sitting in its own juices It'll accelerate the, um, de the deterioration of the meat. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna do a little, like I said, a little sashimi style, a little different recipe. Get Mr. Wahoo out of the package here. Come on, buddy. Oh, man. A little extra skin there, no. So as you take a look at this, absolutely amazing meat. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous piece. So we want to thin slice the Wahoo first thing. This guy prepped out here, got a little piece, little piece of bloodline there. Any extra trimmings, I got a little bit of tendon here. I'm gonna peel that off. Generally, I do a, an exceptional job of cleaning my meat. So I'm gonna thin slice up the Wahoo. And look at that, that's just amazing. So I'm gonna slice this all up and I'll bring you guys back in after I've got it prepped out. Hey guys, so I got the Wahoo all sliced up. Put it on the plate. I've got it in the freezer right now. I want that to get nice and cold while I'm preparing the rest of the dish. So I'm kind of making this up on the fly. I'm gonna do a little something unusual. I haven't seen anybody do this before. I have a honey crisp apple. Doesn't that bad boy look nice? So I got that. We've got a little onion. I'm gonna give you a little tip with your onions. So when you're cutting your onions, if you leave, basically, I don't know if it's called a root bulb. Somebody's gonna correct me on it. If you leave that on there as you work, cut your onion, it doesn't run all the juice out. and doesn't make you cry. So, so as I'm, I got about half of it gone right now, I'll probably use another third of it on, on this recipe but I'm gonna leave that little root bulb on there. 
So we're gonna have a little soy sauce, mandatory. Of course, we've got a little wasabi. I'm gonna do lemon. I know it sounds weird. I'm gonna try a little basil on there. I don't know if it's gonna work. And I'll probably grab a little kosher salt and probably a little bit of pepper with it as well. So I'm just gonna take all the ingredients, dice them up into small pieces, put them on top of the of the wahoo once it cools off, and we'll take and um, we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, just pulled the fish out of the freezer. The plate's nice and cold. The fish is really firm. Just on the edge where she's just starting, you can see the edges of it. It's just starting to almost get frozen there. Almost. It's nice and cold. So, the soy sauce wasabi. I don't know if you can see this. Make sure. Splash a little onion on there. kind of a little bit messy in the kitchen. I cook old school. We're going with the capers. These guys are a little stickier. All right, come on, buddy. We're trying to get them to cooperate, hit the plate. Capers are very, they got a lot of flavor with them, so you, you don't want a large chunk on any given piece in one spot. But I use capers in my fish dip, certain other recipes, apples. Like I said, this is kind of a weird deal I'm putting on here. Never tried it. This is the first time. So you guys are hanging in here with me, seeing how this turns out, seeing if we're going to be eating this or if I'm going to have a pizza coming shortly thereafter. So I'm banking on it. It's got kind of a neat, the smell as it's getting all put together is amazing. You guys smell that? It's just, there's a lot, there's a lot of things going on in there. It's really good. So we're going to see how it works. I don't know if I can hold it together with chopsticks. That might be an issue. Might need to go U.S. style and pull a fork out. So we got a lot of apple, got a lot of that. We're going to add standard, a little basil on there. I don't know why, it just seemed like the right thing to do. If I, had, I don't have any sesame seeds, that'd be good on there as well, but I think tying in an apple and onion and some basil together, I don't think you can go wrong with it. It's just kind of my guess. A little splash of kosher salt. Just real light with that. Pepper, maybe no pepper, no pepper. I was gonna do pepper, changed my mind. And a little lemon juice. Trying to pour it easy, but it's, there we go, we're getting it. You kind of want it evenly splashed around. Okay. I think I got all the kids in the pool. I'm gonna see if I can't give it a shot here. You know if I did a take two on this, because there will be a piece missing. So, come here, buddy. Yum. Okay, here we go. It's, it's actually really excellent. The crunch and the sweetness in the apple Kind of offsets a little bit some of the um, heat from the um, wasabi. And the basil on there is ac actually amazing. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Obviously, I had a blast doing this. Very technical when you're fishing by yourself. Um, the recipe, I literally just whipped this thing up out of the air. It was absolutely fantastic. I polished off the whole plate. That's all I can say. It was delicious. Please hammer that subscribe button and give me a poke on the like button. I'm not sure why YouTube likes us to hit the like button, but they do. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I got a lot of great stuff coming up. 
And thanks, guys, for tuning in. See you on the next episode.